guys! So, it's me again. I decided that since my channel tries to focus on health and nutrition, I am going to start doing a new series that I'm going to call Nutrition 101. And I'm just going to be talking about vitamins, supplements, different things like that. Things I recommend, things I don't recommend. But not just that, but like vitamins and nutrients and minerals themselves and how you absorb them, how you get them from your food, differences in them, things like that. And because this is a personal issue for me, I'm going to start off with iron. Some of you may or may not know that I have Crohn's disease. So iron is important for me um, because I can't absorb as well as I should be able to. I'm in remission right now, yay! But um, yeah, I, I was pretty sick for a while and my iron got very low. I'm back up to normal now. But I do try to um, focus on making sure I get, I'm getting enough iron and I do also have to have capsules as a supplementation, which right here, we'll talk about these here in just a minute. But yeah, so that is going to be a new series that I'm doing. And so let's kick this off. I'm going to pull something up on my computer, sorry. I'm also trying something new with my um, uh, volume, I guess, I'm recording. I have a device tucked in here into my shirt, so um, yeah. So, give me just another second. Okay, sorry about that. My computer's being really weird and slow. I don't know why. I think it might be our Wi-Fi because we've got multiple people here working on different devices. Also, if you hear noise, it could be my dog, but it could also be other people in the other room. They've been cleaning and vacuuming. So, um, yeah. So, iron. Um... There are two different kinds of iron. There's what's called heme iron and there's what's called non-heme iron. Heme iron is iron that you get from a meat source or an animal source. And non-heme iron is the kind of iron that you get from non-meat sources. So plants, beans, nuts, things like that. For vegetarians, they get their iron from a non-heme source. Now, to help the absorption of iron, there are a couple of other things that are required, a couple of other vitamins that are needed for the absorption of iron. And those things are vitamin C, vitamin B12, folate, and zinc. Now, a lot of people mistake folate as being the same as folic acid, and there's very similar, but there are some differences, and that'll be my next Nutrition 101 video, so stay tuned for that, um, hopefully in the near future, as soon as I can get it done. But, so the differences between, again, heme and non-heme, or heme is from an animal, non-heme is from a non-animal. But heme is more easily absorbed by the body than non-heme. With that said, the previously mentioned additional vitamins, vitamin C, B12, zinc, and folate, help the absorption of iron in general, but they're especially important if you're getting your iron from non-heme sources. They work especially well with non-heme food sources because, again, those vitamins all help the uptake or the absorption of iron in your body. So those are all important things to have in your body as well in addition to the iron itself and they will help you absorb the iron whether it's from a heme or non-heme but again it's especially important if you're eating a vegetarian diet a non-heme source to make sure that you have an adequate amount of those vitamins in your diet as well or supplementation is also an option if you need to do that. Now, with that said, there are some things that can inhibit or, you know, hinder your ability to absorb iron. And those things are, let me think for a second. So, 
Things like calcium or dairy products will interfere with absorption of iron. Things like coffee, tea, chocolate, eggs, and surprisingly fiber, those things all kind of um, hinder the absorption of iron. Now, don't get, don't get iron confused with protein. They're both important, but they do different things. Yes, iron is usually found in sources of protein, but they're not the same thing. So we're just concentrating on iron, okay? Not protein, just iron. So, like I said, calcium, coffee, tea, eggs, chocolate, and high amounts of fiber can interfere with your absorption of iron. And there are some prescriptions as well, like antacids or what's called a proton pump inhibitor, which is used to treat acid reflux. Those things can also inhibit your absorption of iron. Now... In addition to that, there are certain illnesses that will also interfere with your absorption of iron. As I said, like I have Crohn's disease, so an inflammatory disease like inflammatory bowel disease, which includes Crohn's and colitis, um, those are both conditions that may interfere with your ability to absorb iron because they affect your digestive system. Um, Hormonal imbalances can also impair your ability to absorb iron. So a lot of different health effects, like health issues, that was my dog, a lot of different personal inner health issues can affect how you absorb iron. So in order to better absorb iron, you need to treat that underlying condition, but also... Again, as I've suggested, supplementation can be necessary in order to get an adequate amount of any specific vitamin or mineral. Like I said, again, I have Crohn's, so I take iron supplements. This one is Nature's Bounty. And it actually, I really like it because it comes with folic acid, B12, and vitamin C already in it. So it already helps me absorb the iron in the capsule, but also helps me get an adequate amount of that in my diet so that it absorbs and I get more of it. So I take, it says take one of these a day, and I typically do. My multivitamin also has iron in it, but sometimes I'll double up if, I've gone to the doctor recently and they say, hey, you've dropped a little bit. I'll double up and I'll be even more diligent about it. It really just depends. So make sure you see your doctor before you start taking any kind of supplements or anything like that. It's really important. Some people need a supplement. Some people don't. And so it's important to make sure you're not overdosing. There is such a thing as too much iron in the body as well. There's actually an illness called hemochromatosis, which I have a couple of friends that have, and that's too much iron in the body. And that's also not a good thing. So be sure you check with your doctor. Now, let's see, what have I not covered? I don't think there's anything that I wanted to cover that I haven't covered. So again, let's recap. Non-heme means not from an animal, iron. And heme means iron that comes from an animal. Iron that comes from an animal is easier to absorb than iron that does not come from an animal. But with adequate intake of other vitamins, specifically vitamin C, vitamin B12, folate, folate rather, <laughs> and zinc. Those will help your absorption of both varieties of iron, but especially the non-meat derived iron, the non-heme iron. And the things again that can decrease your absorption of iron are Calcium supplements, dairy products, um, coffee, tea, chocolate, eggs, and fiber, any type of antacid, and prescription proton pump inhibitors prescribed for treating acid reflux. Those are all things that can hinder your absorption of iron. 
And again, I cannot stress enough, please check with your doctor before starting any supplement. Use your best judgment as well. Um, doctors make mistakes too, but please consult a qualified professional or you know, use your best judgment. Don't just jump into something without being informed. So there you go. I hope you have learned a little bit in this video about iron and its absorption, different varieties of iron and where you can get it. Um, like I said, meat sources and then non-meat sources. Meat sources are kind of obvious. Red meat has the highest amount of iron and then your non Meat sources would be like beans and um, whole grains have a lot of protein, so I'm assuming they have iron and nuts and leafy greens, um, spinach, things like that. Those are your non-meat sources of iron. And those are all good too, but make sure you're getting enough of those previously mentioned vitamins. So again, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd really like that. And check back for my next video. It will be Nutrition 101 on folate acid or folate versus folic acid. Sorry about that. I can't talk. But so stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.